unnecessary assets, assets that may not meet the company's quality control standards or illegal payments to suppliers. Again, as we consider these, the separation of duties, the segregation of duties, remember that you might often think that, hey, you know, my employees wouldn't do that. I'm going to hire good people. But that's not going to happen in my uh, area. But just note, again, as, as companies grow, you're going to need more separation of duties. And even if you're small, what you want to do is remove any risk factors. The, the temptation, the, the fact that an employee can look at something and say, uh, I, I could commit fraud right now. And if I wanted to, it's actually stressful, you know, because, you know, they're involved in two areas. They can actually say it's possible for that to happen. People could perceive that I'm that 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 I maybe I am doing. They wouldn't know because I'm involved in these two things. So you want to basically remove that as much as possible, as much as you're capable of doing, as long as it as to the degree that it doesn't increase any problem with the functioning of the organization. Remove any any um, any risk factors or any any temptation to commit you know fraud or anything that is there i mean you know don't set the money in the middle of the cafeteria table and and expect people to you know you're going to be taxing them on their willpower <laughs> just not to pick up the hundred dollars that's sitting in the middle of the table so you want the separation of duties as basically a benefit as well uh if it's possible to be putting those in place property plant and equipment records function is segregated from the general ledger function if this was not segregated, an individual can conceal any uh, defalcation that would normally be detected by reconciling subsidiary records with the general ledger control account. So that reconciliation process, the subsidiary ledger to the control account should be a, a good control to have. If we have the same person involved, they could adjust those accounts. Then, of course, the, that control would be less effective. The property and plant and equipment PP and E records function is segregated from the custodial function. So the PP and E records and then the custodial, the people that are basically taking care of or overseeing uh, the, the actual uh, maintenance or the caretaking of the property, plant and equipment. You could you consider them having basically possession in some sense of the property, plant and equipment. If this was not segregated, tools and equipment can be stolen and the theft can be concealed by adjusting the accounting records. And then we have when a periodic physical inventory of PP&E is done, and this should happen periodically. Notice the property, plant, and equipment uh, is gonna be physical type of inventory or physical type of things similar to inventory in that it has a physical presence. Inventory is something we count for sure. The property, plant, and equipment, because it's larger and whatnot, may not have the physical count as often, but we should still have basically that physical count just to verify the presence of the property, plant, and equipment. So when a periodic physical inventory of property, plant, and equipment is done, the individual responsible for the, for the inventory needs to be independent of the custodial and record keeping function. And again, remember when we're thinking inventory here, we're thinking inventory of property, plant, and equipment, not inventory, the things that we're selling type of inventory. If this is not segregated, theft of the ent entity's capital assets can then be concealed. Now we'll consider the substantive analytical procedures related to PP&E, property, plant, and equipment. These are the substantive tests. So we've, we've talked about inherent uh, risk, control risk, and now we're thinking about the substantive tests related to the detection risk. So these are substantive testing, but they're analytical substantive testings. Remember, these are things like comparing ratios. These are things when I would think of myself as basically, or the cozy auditor that's in my own office in the audit firm comparing just numbers and ratios and whatnot. It's instead of the substantive tests that we would typically think of as substantive tests, going out, for example, and seeing that the that these uh, property, plants, and equipment are there, pulling invoices, being at the business's office. So these are analytical procedures. We could prepare prior year balances and current year balances in property, plants, and equipment and depreciation. So that's our standard kind of thing. What, what happened last year? What happened this year? What's the difference between the two? What's the dollar change? What's the percentage change that could give us some idea of if the change is significant and what's going on with them? Then we can compute the ratio of depreciation expense to the related PP&E property plant and equipment account. So depreciation expense to PP&E and compare to the prior year's ratios as well. So we can do that ratio analysis and compare our results to prior year. Compute the ratio of repairs and maintenance expense to the related PP&E accounts. Remember that repairs and maintenance is something that we want to we want to consider because we also want to consider things like uh, is something recorded to repairs and maintenance 
that should have been capitalized. So this kind of ratio of, re of repairs and maintenance, for example, what if they completely overhaul the entire piece of equipment, then you would think, well, maybe it shouldn't be repairs and maintenance as an expense. Maybe it should be something that uh, should be capitalized as as part of an improvement to the actual asset. So that's something that we want to be considerate of. That's This ratio will give us some idea possibly of that as well. We can compare that to prior years. Compute the ratio of insurance expense to related PP&E accounts. So insurance related to the PP&E, and we can compare that to prior years. And we can review the capital budget. So they should have a budget. If you're talking about publicly traded companies, they should have a capital budget, meaning how much they plan on spending for things like capital assets. And we could take that capital budget and compare amounts spent with amounts budgeted to spend.